Hi, uh, Roger here. Kingdom Hearts. Great games. Love them. Always a sucker for 3D platform RPG hybrids. Great music and settings, but <laughs> that story, wow. I would say I have a love-hate relationship with it, but I wouldn't say hate. More love, confused, hilarity, fascination relationship. I don't know, it's too interesting and weird to hate. Uh, so several months ago, years ago, I made a Kingdom Hearts video discussing things, exploring what's going through my head when trying to follow what's going on, and promised to make a follow-up video, which I haven't for a while for several reasons. You got several facts wrong! Well, of course, that was partly the point. A confused soul trying to figure out Kingdom Hearts' labyrinth-like story and trying to explore why it seems so confusing. Not an excuse! You need to represent the facts! This is a theory exploration show, not a fact show. If we just say the facts, we'd just be reading straight off Wikipedia, saying things everyone already knows. It'd be too obvious, and it'd be doing a disservice to Kingdom Hearts, which seems to want to invite personal interpretations. So instead, you'll make a video educating people on lies? Not lies. Interpretation. Interpretation based on lies. Oh, uh, these are Captain Theory and Captain Obvious. They represent my internal struggle or something. For these videos, I, I guess. The desire to go off the beaten path and explore and risk getting lost or to stay close to the confirmed truth, the facts, but risk of not getting anywhere. Not that truth means much in Kingdom Hearts anyway, that's a little messy and open for interpretation anyway. This problem, a lot of people want me to talk about Kingdom Hearts, again, but my entire approach to the series is out of amused bafflement, not of knowledge. And honestly, I don't really care that much about understanding the story, because I don't think the story really has that much to offer. Everything really boils down to good is good, evil is evil, and good must boink evil in the head with a big metal stick. Just with lots of convoluted symbolism and weirdness around it. Well, and very nice characters. Pleasant characters. But half the time I have no idea what they want or why they're doing anything, so a friendship or something. I think you really need a spiritual mind to genuinely enjoy Kingdom Hearts story properly. That's kind of the impression I get from talking with Kingdom Hearts fans who do genuinely love the story on its own level. But you need to approach it almost like a religious kind of story. So uh, me talking about Kingdom Hearts, it's like letting an atheist talk about the Bible. Either we throw up our hands and say, well, the point of the Bible is that God is amazing and I'll blindly follow these rules, just boil it down to an unflattering, skewed basic core, or we'll go in death and we'll soon be joking and mocking all the metaphors and concepts while utterly missing the genuine point it's trying to make. Disgusting! But now I'm here for the facts, not this drill! <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts is a Walt Disney and Final Fantasy crossover role-playing game from Squaresoft, now Square Enix. The first game was released in the West in 2002. It stars Haley Joel Osment as the main character Sora. And also... Everyone already knows this, Captain Obvious! Maybe they don't! If people don't even know these basic facts about Kingdom Hearts, then the rest of this video will be too confusing and meaningless to follow. This video already requires basic knowledge. Might as well focus on new, interesting things to talk about instead of wasting everyone's time with mere trivia. Mere trivia? Right. So, originally I was going to, I might still in the future, talk about how story tactical the Kingdom Hearts narratives are presented, like the previous video, but since I'm mostly approaching the series from confused bafflement with only a vague understanding of what's really going on, despite having played all the games except for the Kingdom Hearts X cell phone game and Kingdom Hearts 2.8, for this video, I figured, hey, let's talk and explore the core lore of Kingdom Hearts. Indeed. We need to represent the facts. Now, as I was trying to say, the game also stars David Gallagher as Riku, Paul St. Peter And how as... is just mentioning a grocery list of voice actors engaging information in any way? Now, of course, there's already tons and tons of videos and articles explaining the lore, though they usually do it on Kingdom Hearts' own terms. This is darkness, hearts is hearts. They take it straight on on face value. So I guess that's what we'll be doing this video. Not just explore the lore on its own merits, but try to translate it to our monkey brains or something. And getting it all wrong. Well, art is always open to interpretation, I suppose. Especially something that seems so abstract. Enough babbling. Let's try to follow the story. Captain Obvious, how about you tell us the origin of Kingdom Hearts, where it all began? To misrepresent it for the sake of jokes, no doubt. Yes. No! Maybe? I, I don't know. Well, let's see. We have at least two accounts on the origin of Kingdom Hearts, from Curry's grandmother and from Sorcerer Yen Sid. I think I'll take preference over a mighty sorcerer rather than someone's granny. So in Yen Sid's words from Dream Drop Distance, long ago in the Age of Fairy Tales... Hold on! Why are ancient times called the Age of Fairy Tales? 
Aren't characters such as Snow White, Aladdin, and Cinderella present in the present? So there's fairy tales in the present day, too. For God's sake! Eight words in, and you're already being a smartass! Shut up, you Justice League reject! It's not meant literally. It's just a phrase, like, in the time of legends. But this being Disney, it's fairy tales. It just means they don't have the facts, and whatever happened in this era is only known through ancient tales. So information about this era is a little vague. Yeah, unlike information about current day Kingdom Hearts, that totally isn't vague at all. Shut up! <clears throat> in the age of fairy tales, the world was filled with light, a gift many believed from an unseen power known as Kingdom Hearts. You see, Kingdom Hearts was protected by its counterpart, the Chi Blade, so that none may ever lay hands on its mysteries. Fascinating. So Kingdom Hearts, basically a, a god or the core of the universe, considers this Chi Blade to be its counterpart, its equal. Well, that's just a mere weapon. Well, what kind of god doesn't have some sort of Excalibur doing their bidding? But it's a sword, a tool. We're to call a tool your exact equal. It says nothing good about Kingdom Hearts when it considers a mere weapon to be its counterpart. Chi Blades are more than mere weapons. They're magical and stuff. And don't take it so literally. It just means the Chi Blade is aligned with Kingdom Hearts, part of its identity. Now shut up and let me finish. But in time, the world was overrun by legions who wanted the light all for themselves, and the first shadows were cast upon the land. These warriors crafted Chi Blades in the image of the original Chi Blade, and waged a great war over Kingdom Hearts. But Kingdom Hearts is this huge moon flying in the sky. Makes you wonder what all these warriors wanted to do with it if they won the war. Cut the moon into pieces and all take a piece with them or something? They did literally want Kingdom Hearts. They wanted the light. And they're fighting a war over a light source? That's like we wage war over sunshine. If there's that much of a scarcity of sunlight, it seems to people have more of an over- Stop taking it so literally! Light is like hope! People were fighting over hope! Inspiration! Metaphorical light! What exactly were they so desperately hoping for that's worth waging a war? Shut up! Let me finish. Ahem. We call this the Keyblade War. But though the war extinguished all light from the world, the darkness could not reach the brightness inside every child's heart. Brightness of a child's heart? Seriously? Those little monsters? It's the adults that are volunteering at soup kitchens. We're working with ferritol logic here. And there, children are wonderful pure creatures with nothing but pure and warm fuzzy thoughts. Now shut up! <clears throat> with that light, the world was remade as we know it today, with countless smaller worlds shining like stars in the sky. As for the real Chi Blade, it did not survive the battle. The two elements that created it, one of darkness and one of light, shattered into twenty pieces, seven of light, Thirteen of darkness. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, not again! Uh, earlier it was implied that darkness was created when people desired Kingdom Hearts. You know, the, the first shadows were cast on the land, as it said. This is more explicitly stated in Kyrie Grandma's version of the origin story. Everyone loved the light, and then people began to fight over it. They wanted to keep it for themselves, and darkness was then born into their hearts. The darkness spread, swallowing the light in many people's hearts. So darkness was supposed to be born in response to Kingdom Hearts and the Chi Blade. So how can the Chi Blade already have been made from darkness? Also, if the Chi Blade is genuinely Kingdom Hearts' counterpart, and Kingdom Hearts is pure light, shouldn't the Chi Blade be pure darkness? I don't know! Maybe the Chi Blade came to be after the humans were going after Kingdom Hearts with their Chi Blades. But the Chi Blades were modeled after an already existing Keyblade. Nitpicking. Who cares? Yeah, it is nitpicking, and honestly, in normal circumstances, I wouldn't really care. But again, this is the foundation. This is where every single later plot point of Kingdom Hearts begins, is based on. This isn't just me picking one of Xenohort's random, irrelevant, meaningless ramblings. This is THE origin story and explanation that's the full basis of darkness, light, Keyblades, everything this maddening Tower of Pisa storyline is freaking based on. If I can't go even through the foundation of this entire saga for five words without noticing a hundred contradictions, then how am I supposed to hang on when this plot actually starts becoming complicated? <laughs> this is the story before the damn plot twist and weird shit begins, and I'm already lost. <sighs> See, this is why I'm not a religious person. Make me read a Bible or a Quran or whatever, my brain is bouncing in a million directions as well. But fine, finish the origin story and then we'll try to couple it together later, I guess. And as for the source of all light, the one true kingdom hearts, it was swallowed by the darkness, never to be seen again. 
As long as it remains there, even the brightest world will have its dark corners. After all, light begets darkness, and darkness is drawn to light. But- WILL YOU SHUT IT?! For this reason, some decided to use the Keyblade, a weapon designed to conquer the light, to defend the light instead. These were the first heroes of the Keyblade. Okay, now I'm finished. Okay, so first the legend says, As long as Kingdom Hearts, the source of all light is gone, there will remain darkness. But then it says, light always begets darkness. So shouldn't Kingdom Hearts cause more darkness? In other words, now Kingdom Hearts has been swallowed by darkness, there should be less darkness. If you remove a light source, there's no more shadows. Isn't that a conundrum? If darkness wins, there's darkness. But if light wins, there's even more darkness. And what the hell does beget mean? Beget? Oh, that's um, googling. One, to produce offspring by sexual reproduction used especially of a man. Two, to cause to exist or occur. Produce, violence begets more violence. Ah, right, right. So Kingdom Hearts manly light sexually reproduces more darkness. Gotcha. No, it's obviously the second meaning that's the relevant- Yes, thank you, Captain Obvious. Roger was clearly making a joke. This isn't a laughing matter. This is serious law, goddammit. Right. So that's the genesis of the origin story. And let's see if we can put this in context and figure out what darkness and light mean. So allow me to retell the origin story from how I understand it now. Instead of all the Disney planets we see in the game, in the past the Kingdom Hearts universe was one big giant planet. I love to imagine it with all the Disney art styles horribly clashing with each other Gumball style, but in reality it probably looked like everyone comes from Square Enix's usual factory assembly line of interchangeable pretty boys with wacky haircuts. So there's a light coming from an unseen force, so not very unseen then. This causes all people to start a war to discover the secrets of this light source, because apparently in the Disney universe when people are curious about astrology bodies in outer space they start a war with each other instead of bothering with math or rocket engineering or anything. It's a metaphor. They're not curious about Kingdom Hearts as a rock in space, but the philosophical meaning of the human soul, of goodness, of evil. Right, right. So everyone starts philosophizing about the meaning of existence by bonking each other on the head with metal sticks. Well, to Kingdom Hearts defense, that's a silly but tragically realistic portrayal of how people debate in the real world. For some reason, Kingdom Hearts wants to protect its secrets from people finding out. Apparently exploring Kingdom Hearts light sources will uncover its hidden porn collection or something. So Kingdom Hearts utilizes the Chi Blade, a magical metal stick that presumably boings every Disney character on the head who wants to understand light, and in retaliation, the Disney scientists are savagely bonking on each other's heads in their pursuit of knowledge until the Chi Blade explodes into pieces, Kingdom Hearts get swallowed up by the physical incarnation of people's desire for knowledge, and everything is destroyed and there's nothing left but a cold, dark vacuum of space. Except apparently there's a bunch of children floating in the cold vacuum of space with virtuous hearts that allow them to create Walt Disney planets out of thin air. Am I getting it right so far? Your interpretation makes no sense! Well, the source information made no sense. Darkness is not people's desire to gain knowledge of light. That's just what created it. The greed and jealousy people felt. Jealousy of what? The light! They were jealous of a floating rock in space that emits light? And greed? What do you mean greed? So you have sunlight radiating from space? So these Disney scientists were thinking, hmm, you know? I'm not satisfying with the meager sunburn and heat exhaustion I can get from the Sahara. I really want to go to the fucking sun and embrace this deadly explosion of magma up in person. It's not like sunlight. It's symbolic. A tragic tale of humanity. A broad way of saying humanity has always been fighting wars for knowledge, for land, for food, for a better life. And their desire for a better life creates pain and tragedy for others. People's desire to make their lives better comes at the cost of others. It's that simple. Alright, I suppose that makes sense. Though, it is a bit of a convoluted way to get that across. If it's told so blunt, the story would be obvious and dull. True, the craziness does make it a lot more entertaining. It just makes me very sarcastic about the whole thing. <laughs> you're right, you're right. We keep harping on the literal-minded meanings. Keeping it simple. You had some people, some had positive energy, light, hope. Other people didn't, so they got jealous at those people and started punching them. So hard that the entire universe exploded and the core of the universe was swallowed into pure darkness. Hey, you can't say that stuff's metaphorical. We see the physical consequences of those. There's more to it, too. In the mobile phone game, Kingdom Hearts X, it's revealed there are five foretellers. 
Once there was a master of masters who had five foretellers plus a sixth keyblade wielder who were tasked to protect the light from darkness. The master of masters then changed their name and manipulated them in collecting lux for their own purposes. <sighs> oh joy, Kingdom Hearts explaining things by throwing even more random names and concepts on the pile. Well, I think Kingdom Hearts 3 will explain. Ha! <laughs> oh great. Can't wait for Kingdom Hearts to, uh, explain. The problem is you're constantly looking for meaning, for symbolism. There isn't any. It's just pure lore. But the characters constantly talk about it and present it like they're making some kind of philosophical point. And they're constantly asking and talking and philosophizing, even though their words mean nothing to me, or I, I can't recognize any humanity through it. It's just wacky space logic that is only applicable to Kingdom Hearts' own technical plot, but not to any level of actual philosophical debate. It's driving me nuts. Like the finale to First Kingdom Hearts, is scientist Ansem having this debate with Sora whether Kingdom Hearts is light or darkness. A discussion whether the core of the universe is good or evil. I don't know what to do with this information. Where are you going with this? So, what if the core of the universe, Kingdom Hearts, is light, is good? Then what? What are you gonna do? Pat it on the head? Aw, oh, that's a good core of the universe. Good boy, good boy. Or if it's evil? Bad core of the universe, bad! How dare you be evil! I'm gonna put you in core of the universe jail! What the hell does it mean if the nature of the universe is evil? What do you want me to do with that information? God, the core of the universe, the nature of the universe is, is evil! Okay, so does, does that mean that all living creatures now have the excuse to throw morality out of the window and, are, and act mindlessly evil? Hey, it's the nature of the universe, so let's all murder each other senseless now. Whee! I guess it has to do with my personal approach to life. This, this, this stuff is just too alien for my brain to care about or understand. It, it's too religious in nature. Like, I need confirmation of the universe to decide for me, instead of me just doing things because they're logical to me. But whatever. That's me trying to understand actual meaning and wit from this entire discussion. I'm overthinking it. So in Kingdom Hearts' own terms, it's just lore. Random object is either Magic A or Magic B. It was Magic A! Hooray! Instant happy ending. Do -do 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 Wow, deep. And then Sora still fails to get home because uh, darkness probably did something evil. Damn you, fake representation of everything vaguely naughty! Let's keep it simple. Try not to drown in all the details. Basically, it's about human nature, our desire to improve our lives, even at the cost of others. That's the philosophical core- No, no, you're making it too hard again. Kingdom Hearts is just about getting the balance between light and darkness. Ansem and Xenohort, the characters driving the story, are trying to discover the truth about light and darkness and the heart. Human nature. Okay, let's talk about the bad guys then. What the characters actually do. Yeah, Xenohort, the seeker of darkness. Oh no, he's about to find the light switch. He'll be in command of the light. All right, Master Xenohort. He is a central character to the plot, putting everything in motion. Let's start with Xenohort's story. If we follow his story from the start, everything will make sense to you. Can't directly quote information, so we'll have to do it a bit freestyle. Anyway, Zenohort was born on Destiny Islands. Then one day he was visited by his future selves Heartless, who taught him about time travel and told him to collect 12 past, present, future Heartless nobodies and possessed other people version of himself in order to recreate the Chi Blade. Well, that didn't take long to go completely off the rails again. Doesn't really matter because time travel wipes your mind, so he forgets anyway. We'll get back to that. Point is, the little adventure inspired him to leave Destiny Islands, which somehow he managed to do. Presumably by making the entire planet explode in darkness, like how Riku did. <sighs> you don't know that. And Riku didn't explode the planet, he just opened the door of darkness. Right, right. I just love to think that opening cave doors that explode the entire planet is the main mode of transportation in the Kingdom Hearts universe. That's not how it works. Anyway, so Xenohort finds himself at the Land of Departure, where the Keyblade wielders are trained. There he learns that it's a Keyblade's duty to protect light from darkness. Okay, so these Keyblade wielders, they're basically like the police force of Kingdom Hearts? Like Jedi Knights? Keepers of Peace and Balance of the Universe? Something like that, yes. And Xehanort managed to join them. Well, I think it's better to look at them as samurai than space police. It's more based on Japanese warriors, except with their allegiance towards light instead of a feudal lord. Anyway, Zelohort didn't like the we must fight darkness thing. He thought there should be a balance between light and darkness. Why? So far, light is amazing, fantastic stuff that makes everyone happy and inspired and strong. 
while darkness destroys everything and turns people into creepy monsters. What's even an argument to defend darkness? To use it for power, I guess? Power to do what? I don't know, just power. Characters never want anything tangible or real, they're always motivated by abstract concepts. Let's go on an endless killing spree until we find... light! Not any of the already available daylight or something, but until we find the literal physical incarnation of the essence of light itself! And then when we find it, we, uh, we just shove it in a shirt pocket or something, and, and then we go home and put it on a nice shelf in the living room, right next to the snowball collection and my nice high school photo album. Ah, really matches the curtains too. I feel to see why people who want power bother with darkness. Light power keeps you a sexy, optimistic human that's beloved with everyone and has great social benefits, where darkness makes you a scary, monstrous beast man, woman thing that, that wants to destroy everything and makes you lose your mind. I'm, I'm not really seeing the benefits. Darkness is more powerful, I suppose. Is it? I mean, sure, darkness can turn you into a planet-sized, incomprehensible, asphalt demon monster that swallows entire planets, but a kid with a light-powered stick can still bunk it in the head enough until it begs for mercy, so... I suppose you could say darkness is power for the weak-willed? Like, getting power from light requires discipline, principles, a strong will. Like in the real world, you need a lot of discipline to have a healthy body, study, be virtuous, while stealing and lying and murder is relatively easy. Yeah, but in the Kingdom Hearts universe, people who are weak-willed are consumed by darkness, basically die and turn to a zombie. Lord is arguing for using darkness on your own accord, which requires strong willpower, so if you have the willpower to be able to control darkness, you might as well use it for light and stay sexy and socially desirable, instead of creepy monster beast man. The hell are you talking about? Organization 13 are all sexy. Darkness is shown to be a useful tool in the games. Mickey Mouse uses a Kingdom Hedy, a keyblade made out of darkness. And Riku uses the Soul Eater made by darkness. And do those weapons have any specific advantage that light weapons don't? Yes. They work against other weaknesses. All oh, right, against light. Which has been extremely rare ever since Kingdom Hearts was swallowed by darkness, so whatever. Besides that, there's also the moral problem. Well? I mean, darkness and light are presented as moral judgments, right? Darkness is greed, jealousy, and evil, while light is hope, inspiration, and wonder. So, speaking from the whole philosophical perspective of the series, Kingdom Hearts wants to present a case that evil can sometimes be justified. But the only examples it can use is when evil is presented as a neutral tool, not as a genuine expression of evil. What's your point? My point is, it's like I'm trying to make a philosophical point that jealousy and greed can be important and useful traits, but then my only argument in favor of jealousy is that jealous people can wear boots, and boots are useful to wear. You're not really making a moral point. So for all this talk that the darkness has a place in the universe and needs to exist, Kingdom Hearts' argument is only sometimes darkness can provide you with a nice tool you can use to pursue your light-oriented goals. In other words, you're still acting mostly in service of light, of good. Evil just happens to provide you with a useful tool that's otherwise disconnected from the actual moral consequences of evil. There's plenty of examples of good forms of darkness. There's the Dream Eaters. And what do they do that represents darkness? They're just cuddly, fluffy Pokemon pets who are more than happy to serve you in your quest. Are they greedy? Jealous? Evil? Not really. Go ahead and launch them violently from a cannon into a pinball machine. They don't mind. They eat dreams. Oh no! They eat imaginary illusions of your brain! You're taking the symbolism too far again! What's your point? My point is that we flew off the track of this discussion. I'm sorry. We'll have to rant endlessly about dark and light, but we were supposed to say close to Xenohorde's backstory now. So, uh, sorry for the diversion. Xenohorde joined the Keyblade Wielders and wanted to restore the balance between light and darkness by getting even more darkness in the world where darkness already eliminated most of the light, but whatever. So, what's next? So Xenohorde wants to recreate the Keyblade War to change the original outcome. To do that, he wants a new young body for himself, resurrect the Keyblade, and get Kingdom Hearts back. He gets a pupil, Ventus, who's too weak to be a new body, so instead he uses the kid to recreate the Keyblade. So he splits the kid up in two halves, a good half and a bad half. If he'd merge those two halves, he creates the chi blade. Wait, but if you split a person in half and then merge them again, don't you just get the same person? Does that mean that any random person has enough darkness and light in themselves to recreate the Keyblade? This counterpart to Kingdom Hearts? You'd think it takes a little more than that. And does this mean you can create multiple Keyblades? I'm surprised the bad guys aren't constantly splitting people into pieces and creating endless Keyblade clones. A weapon of the gods sounds immensely useful. 
Yeah, especially since they're in constant desperate need of a keyblade later on when Xenohort is leading Organization 13. Well, it's a very difficult process, and it nearly killed Ventus. Yeah, but Xenohort has plenty of spare time, and I don't think he cares that he kills a few people the process of getting it to work a few more times. When you read his Ensign reports, he's constantly talking casually about how he just grabs a few random test subjects and pulls their hearts out and pounds so much darkness into them that their victims melt into monsters. Some serious Temple of Doom and Elector stuff going on there. And it's written so casually it always makes me laugh. I can only assume Zemes is just casually writing it down in his little diary. Dear diary, today was a good day. My test subject is screaming in pain and fear as he deteriorates into an army of monster men. Ah, how frail hearts can be. <laughs> Shut up! As I said, extracting the darkness from his heart takes a toll on the boy's heart. So Xenohort drops him off at his old friend Eriquis to look after. Here he sees Ericus's pupils and decides to use Terra for a new body. So by the end of birth by sleep, Terra's body has been overtaken by Xenohort. Ventus was absorbed by Ventus into the Chi Blade when Ventus fought against it and exploded. Aqua got stuck in the realm of darkness. Xenohort lost his memory and was found by Ansem the Wise, who decided to help him recover his memory by studying his heart. Got brain damage? Oh, look at your heart! Ah, uh, Kingdom Hearts science. So now we get to my favorite part, where our scientist grabs on indisclosed test subjects, pull their hearts out, shove some darkness in there until they have a dungeon filled with heart-devouring monsters. The other scientists grow mad with power and turn themselves into heartless monsters and use the knowledge they accumulated from studying the human heart to create a demonic portal of death, sending their master Ansem to the realm of darkness. But not until after Mickey Mouse randomly shows up for a spot of tea. So by studying the human heart, they learn the ability to open up a portal to hell. Basically. Yep, because darkness is amazing. It resurrects people, opens portals to hell, makes entire planets explode, and the best part is, every person in the world has this in their heart. Literally every Disney character has a nuclear bomb in their chest. Well, I suppose I can understand why people want to pursue this power. It sounds interesting. Yeah, but so is light. Light can also resurrect, heal, whatever wacky things you want to happen. I don't think they ever lay down any rules or limitations. Dark and light do whatever the hell you want. Thus making me not give a damn about any drama about whether someone uses dark powers or light powers. It's a dice roll of incomprehensible randomness. I'm surprised this universe even has normal people living normal lives. You'd think Disney characters like Snow White's Queen or Mother Gothel would be constantly shoving their hearts into new young bodies and- Disney characters don't know about any of the forces outside of their planet. Yeah, because Keyblade Masters do such a great job concealing the existence of other worlds, like by picking fights with every authority figure they run into and constantly meddle with every- Anyway, Xenohort wants to get the Chi Blade and Kingdom Hearts. She uses his heartless and nobody that he accidentally created with the experiments to get them. To create the Chi Blade, he needs to find seven pure hearts, either the princesses of pure light or seven Chi Blade wielders. And he needs 13 evil hearts, through Organization 13 at first, and then by using his own clone. <laughs> Funny how he first thought he could merely split up one Ventus into two halves for the Chi Blade, but now he suddenly needs 20 people, and 20 people with extreme strong amounts of light and darkness. So one Ventus is as good as 20 people of pure goodness and evil, huh? Well, Ventus wasn't good enough. Actually, Ventus was too good. He was turning into the Chi Blade until he fought back. You'd think with seven swords mixed up in this Chi Blade, the Xenohorts will have to deal with even more metal sticks being bonked into their heads than that they would have had with just one Ventus. But right, so that's going to be the plot of Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Something like that, yes. So let me lay this story on the table. In ancient times, there was a Keyblade War where warriors fought for Kingdom Hearts. Nobody wins this war, instead, presumably because of the violence or energy of fighting, the Chi Blade explodes, and that makes people stop fighting and Kingdom Hearts disappearing into darkness. Xenohort doesn't like the end results, so he goes to recreate the exact same circumstances to recreate the war. But the first war had no winner. The things that happened, happened because of the war in general, not because any side won. So this new war will have the exact same outcome, won't it? This isn't a case of, let's start the second world war again and let the Nazis win this time. Huh. Well, Kingdom Hearts X is implying something did happen during the first war. The Master of Masters had some kind of plan, so maybe that's going to be something Xenohort will change up. Right, so Xenohort gets 13 clones, Sora and friends will helpfully provide Xenohort with 7 Keyblade Master. They're always willing to lend a helping hand to a world-destroying villain. They have to! If they don't get 7 Keyblade wielders together, 
Xenohort will come after the Princess of Light. I suppose. So then, Xenohort will have his 13 clones and 7 Keyblade wielders, then he'll uh, throw himself and everyone else in the cauldron, stir for 20 minutes, in the oven for 12 minutes, and... Ah, a freshly baked Keyblade. Then as soon as some kind of Disney character will desire some hope or light, the Sora slash Xenohort powered Keyblade will fly in and bunker on the head. Then all Disney characters will violently try to murder each other and a Chi Blade over some light. Chi Blade explodes again, and we're back where we started. The end. Ah, uh, can't wait. That's not how it will go! Well, I am curious how they'll make the Chi Blade without having the main character and villain be absorbed into it. I suppose the 20 people won't literally turn into the Chi Blade, but merely inspired into existence or something. So, that's the entire story? It seems to be Xenohort's plan, far as I can tell. So, what about the Disney characters? Mickey, Donald, and Goofy? They're around, I guess. As for our heroes, Sora and Riku are the chosen ones. Chosen by Ventus and Terra, really awkward and fast. Terra should fly in, feeling some energy, flies in. Hey kid, you're the Keyblade Warrior now, have fun, bye, wee, boom. That's not true. They had a strong mental connection. Terra felt Riku had a strong heart. Only those with a strong heart can touch the Keyblade. Just saying it's an extremely awkward setup for such a vital aspect of the story. Why was Terra looking for a pupil on his first day on the job already? You'd think looking for a pupil to follow you up is something you do after a few years in the service when we're Well, it had to be done before the end of the game, where Aqua, Ventus, and Terra are taken out. <laughs> Poor Kyrie, she wasn't even chosen. She just accidentally touched the Keyblade. Whoops, you touched it. Now you're a Keyblade Master. <laughs> oh dear. Well, let's hope whenever Sora's walking through the crowds of, uh, at the Chinese palace, streets of Paris, or at the opera, there aren't any, any people with strong hearts, or we get a whole platoon of now Keyblade wielders. Oh, and I just love how the next part of her story is described. Uh, check this Wikipedia thing out. Kyrie appears on Destiny Islands during a meteor shower, though it was believed that Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, had sent Kyrie to the islands as an experiment to test any possible connection between the Keyblade wielders and the Princess of Heart. Her arrival was actually due to the protection spell error Aqua had cast on her one year earlier. When Xenohort cast her loose in the ocean between, she was naturally drawn to Sora and Riku on Destiny Islands. Why is that funny? Just like with Xemna's diary, I just love how casually and poetic things are written down even though they imply gruesome and crazy stuff. Xenohort casts her loose in outer space, or basically launches her into outer space then, and she's drawn to Sora and Riku. Apparently the first thing in her mind when someone throws her in outer space is, Ooh boys, let's go there! And apparently she can propel herself fast enough in space that she manages to get herself launched to a different planet on her own power. I know I'm supposed to see that happen gracefully, with her turning into a star or floating in the ocean, but I can't help but read that with Wally Coyote physics. Santa Hor just chucking an eight-year-old girl right through fucking space as she goes, ah! And then she smashes into Sora's planet with a big hole in the sand. Hi, we're best friends now. Well, that's your interpretation of the scene. <laughs> I can't help but imagine Xenohort constantly chucking people into outer space, crashing into other planets. Every time he's stuck waiting in line at the store, FUCK OFF ASSHOLES! Pew, pew, pew. Time to have my revenge on King Mickey. No, I won't destroy you in battle. I'll just chuck endless groups of illegal aliens to your castle! Say bye bye to your economic and social structure! <laughs> but yeah, so that's roughly the main plot. Uh, in a... In my interpretation? <coughs> uh, Captain Obvious might be disagreeing with. <coughs> Captain Fury, could you follow it? Oh, I think I may have gotten the gist of it. No, you didn't. You guys interrupted me so much of your stupid jokes and weird interpretations that I'm sure the whole story is still unrepresented. Probably, yeah. Yes, no kidding. Well, we wasted everyone's time today. See you all next time. Bye. Can't wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 to pile on on the randomness even more. Let me know in the comments what, uh... I don't even know. What What did we talk about today? With Kingdom Hearts, my brain just jumps everywhere.